With the electronic age, it was no longer necessary to have hundreds of pipes to synthesize sound. Well, you're looking at uh, one of the very first eight-track machines. We used it for switched on Bach, well-tempered synthesizer, right through a uh, good half of Clockwork Orange. This is Wendy Carlos in her Greenwich Village studio. Her synthesized versions of the classics were loved by some, hated by others, but noticed by virtually everyone. Right now we're listening to the A-track and we're mixing, sort of playing the role of the conductor, putting together, in this case, a pair of tracks which has all of the string section. That sounds like this. There's a harpsichord track. There are two flutes. And there's this nice solo that's split up into two tracks. Let's put them all together. Needs a little more echo. Yeah, that's good. Her early work was with a Moog synthesizer. It's a museum piece now. The way it works is the reverse of a pipe organ. First, it generates these harsh, bright sounds containing many pure tones, like playing all the pipes in an organ at once. Pass these bright waves into a filter, which in this case, literally like your tone controls on a hi-fi set, uh, remove portions or boost portions of the sound. We can make it sound very dull, quite pure, or very bright. And you can do this dynamically in time, so sort of percussive or make it open up, make it sit up there. The Moog was revolutionary. But with limited control over the tone components, its sounds were crude. Soon it was overtaken by a second revolution, using computers to exactly specify each individual tone component. Unlike the uh, Moog synthesizer, we're not going to be taking away, tearing down bits of a very bright wave. Instead, we're going to put together little overtones, pieces of sounds, uh, characteristic of all sounds, and uh, assemble them additively rather than subtracting parts that we don't want. Using the computer attached to this keyboard, Wendy Carlo starts to build a xylophone. Here's the first pure tone. Now, obviously, if we want to make it that sound like a xylophone, we're going to have to make it speak more quickly. So I'll shorten the attack from being about a half a second. There. Now it's getting on almost instantaneously, but it's lasting too long. Let me drop that down a bit. Ah, this is much more like a xylophone. Well, that one sounds pretty good. So I'll take that pattern and play a simple music phrase. Now she specifies three more pure tones in the proportion she already knows that a real xylophone produces. Now I'll put in all four of them. Now, this is something that's very close to being a replica of a xylophone, but there's an element that's missing, and that is the hammer noise that you get with a real instrument when the mallet impacts against the wood. So finally, she adds a brief electronic shake to all the components. <laughs> 